Hi, my name is Dr. Melissa Party. I'm the curator of geology at the Illinois State Museum. Uh, there are two main things that we have in the collection that could be uh, considered things from space because they are from space. Um, we have our meteorite collection and then we also have our moon rock collection. And the reason we have these objects in our collection is so that we can have items that can be used to study space because you can't go to space very easily. Um, but we get these little bits of information from outer space that we can then study here on Earth to better understand what's going on in the solar system. So the, uh, the Illinois State Museum has a, does have a meteorite collection. Um, it's not huge, but we do have quite a few different types of meteorites. Uh, at their very simplest, meteorites are rocks that fall from space that land on Earth. There are um, three main types of meteorites um, that can be that can be broadly categorized. There are the metallic uh, meteorites, which are primarily composed of iron nickel um, metals. On the other end of the spectrum are meteorites that are that are called stony meteorites. So these are going to be meteorites that are made out of minerals that are actually very quite similar to um, the ones we find on the Earth's crust. So a lot of what are called silicate minerals. And so these are things like feldspar and quartz and olivine. And then right in the middle are the, um, the, the stony iron or st stony metallic types of meteorites. And these are kind of what they sound like. They are about 50-50 the um, made out of metals and also these uh, these other minerals that are in the stony ones. I've got some items here from the collection that I pulled out to quickly show you uh, what these different types of meteorites would look like. I'll just get that out of the way. So we'll start at one end of the spectrum. So we've got a lot of different meteorites from lots of different places. Um, we collect a bunch of different types of things so that we can have diversity represented in the collection. So this is a, um, an iron meteorite from, from, Arizona, from Arizona. This is the Canyon Diablo meteorite. And you can't tell this from the video, but it is quite heavy. Um, and I'll just hold that real quick. So clearly lots, lots of metal, mostly, mostly made of metal. The other end of the spectrum, we have uh, stony meteorites. So this is actually a cut section. These are all cut sections. Um, the outside of the, the meteorite um, has this varnish that forms as the meteorite enters the Earth's atmosphere. So basically, the outer part of the meteorite gets cooked um, uh, through frictional heat as it, comes, as it comes to Earth. It also gets bombarded with particles, which also uh, contributes to the heating as well. But if you were to cut the meteorite open, you can see it looks really different on the interior. Um, and so this is a rocky meteorite. Although having said that, you can see that there are little bits of metal in the interior. And then the intermediate form that I wanted to show you. Okay. So this is a specimen that is a stony iron meteorite. This one is was found in Canada. And I don't know if you were able to. So you can see here, um, it's about 50-50 metal um, components and uh, rocky components. The Esterville meteorite, it's a stony iron meteorite. This one, it's not been cut open um, and it's quite small. Um, a, lot of, a lot of meteorites people find are actually gonna be pretty small. Um, this is significant for the Illinois State Museum because it was the first meteorite of our collection. It's what kicked off um, our collecting efforts for meteorites. And I believe it fell 
in 1876 is when that meteorite came to Earth. Uh, this larger chunk here, which I already kind of showed you, um, this is part of the Tilden meteorite. So this was a meteorite that fell in 1927. Um, it broke into three pieces as it was coming to, uh, to the Earth's surface. The Illinois State Museum has two out of the three pieces. Um, the, third, the third piece and the larger piece is at the University of Iowa. Um, the two pieces that we have, uh, the smaller of the two was cut. So that's the reason this one was cut to actually share it with other museums. So we, we took a section of this, of this meteorite um, and sent it to the Field Museum and the National Museum. And so uh, we did that so that other scientists could study it. Uh, the other piece that the, that the Illinois State Museum has, the larger, the one that's larger than this one, is actually on exhibit at the museum. So you can actually go, go look at it. It's pretty prominently displayed. Um, so before we went to the moon, or even went into outer space, meteorites were really the only way that we could directly study uh, what the universe is made of. And they, it provides, these meteorites provided clues to us what the composition of the early Earth might have been like, and also what the composition of other planets um, might be like. Um, however, we've since been to the moon when we uh, since first started studying meteorites, and we actually have moon rocks. The Illinois State Museum has moon rocks in our collection. Uh, we have um, samples that were provided to us from the, the first manned mission to the moon, so that would be Apollo 11. And then we also got rocks back from the, the very last manned trip to the moon, so that would be Apollo 17. So I'm gonna actually go, go grab those to show you those. So these are our moon rocks. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got um, two displays here. They're really, they're really nicely done. So this is um, the uh, presentation that was given to the uh, state of Illinois um, following the return of Apollo 11. So they collected a bunch of rocks. And um, as a result of the success of that mission, each state was given a commemorative plaque with little bits of moon rock present in the display. And I just realized this is upside down. And then we also um, have our display still from the final or the last, the last trip where people actually were on the moon. So another, another piece of rock from the moon here. And so these, th th there were more rocks than what I'm showing collected on that trip. Um, and a lot of those rocks have been used to study what the composition of the moon is and uh, to compare it to what uh, is present here on Earth. And so that's helped us inform us on how the, moon, how the moon formed in the first place. This is a small sample of what we have in the, um, the collections that pertain to space. Uh, we have other meteorites and uh, we have the meteorite, uh, the Tilda meteorite um, at the museum. And we, we hope that you um, check it out next time you, that you're there. And